Austin and Conceivable Crew, Coach Amelia here with video two of the double take workout. This is the explanation with technique, tips, and scaling options. So today's workout double take is two rounds for time, a 50 double unders or hop overs or step overs, 40 goblet squats, 30 deadlifts, and 20 kettlebell swings or good mornings with an odd object, and 10 sit-ups. So you'll need to have something to lift, to hold for a good morning or a deadlift. It can be anything around the house. If you have a dumbbell or a kettlebell, that's great, but really any object will work. And I'll show you some samples of odd things around here you might use. If you have a jump rope, you can use that. And you can do double unders or singles, or you can hop over the object that you have or hop in place, lots of options there. And the sit-ups, you can use an ab mat or you can just go natural. You know, 10 sit-ups each round is in a super high volume, so that's a possibility. Let's get started. All right, our first movement is jump roping. And double unders are an option. There's 50, if you wanna do single unders, usually we'll double that. So you would do 100 single unders per round. So if you have a jump rope, you can get started, just kind of get into a gentle skipping rhythm there. Okay. We'll just get 20 seconds jumping rope, okay? Thinking about staying nice and neutral in your body line. Keeping the arms relaxed, just letting the wrists do the spinning. We don't want to do a lot of extra movement with the arms. Really thinking about keeping the legs straight and just pushing down with the feet. We don't want to do a lot of big, kind of what we call like a herky kick with the legs. Okay, so ways to stay efficient if we're doing some jump roping. And if you have double unders, you can move into double under practice with those. Whatever odd object that you might have, or if you have a kettlebell, or a dumbbell, an option would also be to hop or step over. So we'll do the step over first. You can get as high as you want, and that kind of like a hurdle stretch. The higher you step, the more you're gonna be using the hip flexors, so getting a little bit more out of it. So stepping over is an option, or you can hop over it side to side, okay? Or you could go front to back. I would recommend turning around so you can see it if you're gonna do over and back that way. So okay? choosing your object, if it's too high and you want to just do some lateral hops in place, that's an option as well. So something really gets your heart rate up with that first movement. And there are 50 reps of those, okay? The second movement is a goblet squat. And I'll demonstrate it here with the kettlebell. So what I would do is take it by the horns, kind of turn it upside down and bring it to the chest and then squat, holding that weight kind of center in midline. Okay, let myself sit down and back and stand up tall. And I'll show you, even if you have something unusual around the house, you can hold anything, again, chest height against your body, sit down and stand up. So you can really squat with anything, something like this, a crate or a bin, you can add the low, right? You can fill it up with as many items as you would like. If that's too much, a scaling option would be to just squat, and you could squat to the object to get feedback that you're hitting the depth of hip crease below knees. Watch out for any splinters if it's wooden and use squats, 40 of them. Squat into an object with no weight, holding your own object here, holding your kettlebell here for that goblet squat portion. Next we have a deadlift. And again, either of these would be a great choice for lifting. A deadlift, remember, is a hip hinge where we send the hips back, we keep the back long, keep that chest tall and proud, and we add just enough knee bend to pick it up whatever we have off the floor. And so for the kettlebell, I would approach it, be between my feet, my hips back, have that kettlebell on the ground in front of me, my chest stays tall and proud, I stand up till I'm fully extended, squeezing the glutes, tap it back down, and come back up tall. I could do that again with this odd object, hold it here, stand it up, hold it here, and stand it up. Now I'm trying to keep that load close so that it's kind of tracing the legs when you stand up. That's the third movement, and there are 30 reps. The next one, if you have a kettlebell or a dumbbell, would be to do a swing. Okay, and this is still a hip hinge move. We're still using that posterior chain to help open the hips. It's not a squat. Okay, we're still not squatting down to get that kettlebell. We're sending our hips back, good, picking it up there. We can start with the deadlift and then initiate the movement, sending it back between our legs and then up either to eye level or all the way up and overhead. Only if we can control it from the side, we remember that we want to sit. swing it back and then snap the hips to drive that momentum up and all the way to overhead should you 
choose to do that. Okay? If you don't have an object to swing in the crate, we maybe could give it a go. You could hold an object closer to the chest and do a good morning. So similar to a deadlift, a little bit different stimulus. So if I had this crate and I wanted to, I could practice just doing a little bit of a swing. My ankle is going to come back toward my knees, right? Or I could hold it here and get a good morning. I'm changing where I feel that load, setting my hips back, keeping just a very slight bend in the knee and coming back up tall. So holding something here like you would for the goblet squat, but then moving in to more of a hip hinge movement. That's for the fourth movement and there are 20 reps. Finally, move this back here. We have sit-ups. If you have an ab mat, you can use it. Or you can put a towel underneath. Usually you sit to the high side of the ab mat. I sit to the smaller side because of my anatomy. But the point is to give you some support in the low back and also to encourage full range of motion of the movement to get us into full extension. So we're getting all the way back and down to the floor, tapping the floor behind us. And then squeezing the abs tight, you can use your arms to help you sitting up tall so our shoulders come in front of our hip crease, and that's the end of the movement. So coming back and up, coming back and up. And if for any reason the sit-ups are too much, there are lots of different core-oriented movements you can use, such as dead bugs. So you could be here, arms up, and lower and opposite arm and leg. One, two, three. Or you can hold a 30 second plank at the end of the workout and you can go from there. Let me recap one more time the list of movements we have for this workout. They'll take two rounds for time, 50 double unders or hop overs, 40 goblet squats, 30 deadlifts, 20 kettlebell swings or good mornings, and 10 sit-ups with whatever object that you have, with the jump rope if you have it, or hopping over your object side to side or front to back. Two rounds for time. The goal is for this to take between 10 and 15 minutes, so I'll put a 15 minute time cap on the workout video. Um, but hopefully you'll find the right stimulus to keep you in that range. Join me for the next video where we get into the workout.